Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. Let's understand what is OAuth in plain simple English. We have been using OAuth in multiple places now and we have seen OAuth in multiple places as well. But still sometimes we miss the different jargons in the OAuth 2 and we still sometimes don't particularly understand the complete flow of the OAuth 2. It happens to everyone and it has happened to me as well. So I will just walk you through the simple implementation of OAuth 2. Now before this OAuth 2 what generally used to happen was to authenticate or to log into any of the application you would be providing your credentials that is your username and password and with those username and password your application used to check okay whatever the credentials are been passed those are valid or not against the same database and you would be allowed to log in okay that was a standard process been worked out for so long but what auth2 does is auth2 does not directly work on the credentials but it will work on the key so it will provide a key and with that key it will try to authenticate the request okay that's a simple thing now let's understand the simple terms here so if you see this slide there are simple terms as user client or server and resources okay and what you want to do is you want to authenticate your requests okay now we have seen this at many places suppose you have your google account you have your facebook account and other accounts okay now if you're trying to use some other application there there will be options to log in with those different accounts. There will be options to log in with Google, log in with Facebook, log in with LinkedIn, log, log in with GitHub and all. Okay. So those are nothing but your auth to authentications provided by those authentication servers. Okay. There are different authentication servers available and you can build your own authentication server as well. So whatever I have defined here auth server, that is something that will work to authenticate your request. Now, whenever a user is trying to to log in okay this is the client consider client as one of the application okay so this client is nothing but to authenticate you on behalf of your auth server okay with the help of your auth server it wants to authenticate you so what it will do is whenever you're trying to log in to that particular client what client will do is client will send the authorized request okay client will say to the auth server that okay i want to authorize for this particular user okay so this is my client id what client will send is client will send that okay this is my client id and this is my scope scope will define that what type of access you need okay suppose you need only email id or username your first name and last name either you need mobile number what type of access within the application you need everything is depend on the scope so what are the scope is defined accordingly you will get the permission to access the resources okay so this is the authorized request where client will send the authorized request to the auth server and on that what auth server will give is auth server will return the dialog box permission dialog box so auth server will ask the user back okay like this particular application is trying to authenticate do you agree do you give the consent or not and once you give the consent that means your request is approved okay once the request is approved auth server will give the permission to the client that okay user has given the permission and this is the authorization code now you can get the token and you can use it so now once the permission is granted what client will do is client will send the again a new request to the auth server to get the access token because with that access token only we will be able to authenticate that access token is a key okay which we talked about earlier so now with that access token what we'll pass is we'll pass the client id client secrets and the authorization code this client id and client secret are particularly created generated for the particular clients okay for all the different clients this client id and client secret would be different with that only your auth server will be able to identify that okay this is a particular client in my context and i can give the access to that Okay. Now, once the request has been done to the auth server, auth server will validate all those details. And if everything is correct, then it can give the access token. Now with this access token, client is responsible to access all the different resources. So this is our resource, our resource server and resource server will hold over all our different resources. Okay. So now whatever APIs or whatever data client wants to get, client wants to execute any request, then every time client must send the access token to the resource server resource server will identify that access token and accordingly everything will be allowed okay and it will return the responses similarly now whatever this token has been created right this access token 
also has the expiry date so suppose uh, i want this token to be expired every five minutes then we can do that as well so we can set the expiry time and after five minutes that particular token will be expired and once that particular token is getting expired there is a way to refresh the token as well and to get a new token so that particular token has been refreshed and a new token has been created and that particular token will be passed again to fetch the resources so this is how the entire OAuth flow will work where you won't be asked for your credentials your credentials and everything will be validated against your auth server this auth server you can also create and there are different third party servers also available which we can use to have the auth server generated or created for our applications so this is the general flow about the auth 2 there are different flows also available within the auth 2 suppose how you want to authorize your devices how you want to authorize your client to client or server to server applications for all those there are different here and there changes but overall the concept is the same so i hope this simplified version of auth 2 would give you a better understanding about how the auth 2 works and you will be able to implement this auth 2 in your applications very easily so that's been it in this video if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos you can also click on the join button below to join my channel and support me i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye